Hey, Mizzou fans, we're really excited. We're about a month ago. We had our last Google Hangout. Now, tomorrow is the 2014 NFL Draft, if you didn't know that. We're really fortunate in our Google Hangout to have two first-round picks from Mizzou, Jeremy Macklin, Sean Weatherspoon, joining head coach Gary Pinkle. We also have tons of guests from around the nation, Mizzou fans. Um, let's just get started, because I feel like we're going to have a very – Exciting, positive Google Hangout, but um, yeah, I, I certainly appreciate everybody doing this, and certainly Jay Mac, you and Spoon, you guys know about the University of Missouri and his football program, and and the state of Missouri. Just very appreciative of you, you two guys, and uh, I know you're busy, but taking the time. But uh, you're, you're Missouri Tigers, always Missouri Tigers, and I love you guys, and I appreciate you being here. All right, let's get the question started. If you're watching online on GaryPinkle.com, use hashtag hangout with GP. I'll be checking Twitter if anybody out there wants to ask questions. But let's start off with Adam. I know he wanted to get a question right off, so go ahead. Yeah, again, Coach, uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, be with us. And Jay Mack and Spoon, it's awesome that you could join. And maybe you could help Coach answer this question, too. Uh, I have a wedding coming up here. And uh, I saw you do the pinkle dance after the 2014 Cotton Bowl win. And I'm just wondering if you have any dancing tips for me uh, at this wedding coming up. Well, I would I would uh, suggest that you get the right music, number one. Uh, number two, that you rehearse it a little bit more than I did prior to my event. And, uh, and I know Jay Mack and I know Spoon would probably have a lot of comments about that. And, uh, and I hope they're very nice to their, their old head coach. They were there for it. <laughs> I missed the game, but I definitely taught you the dance. Pretty good dance, <laughs> Pretty good dance coach. Well, it wasn't bad, wasn't bad for me. So, so uh, <laughs> had a lot of fun. I know you guys enjoyed uh, seeing your Missouri Tiger football team win that game at the end. That was pretty cool. Yes, indeed. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I think I might have enjoyed the dance a little more, though. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> more than a cotton ball win. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else want to jump in? Go ahead. So, J Mac and, and Spoon. Yeah, Spoon, go ahead. Go ahead. Can I ask? Can yeah, go ahead. Jump we can't here? hear hey, you know, Let me. Uh, uh, you know, this is a big day. Uh, next, the next three days for a lot of a lot of Mizzou football players and obviously football seniors around the country uh, that are uh, up in, uh, eligible for the draft. And you know, it wasn't too long ago, Spoon, that you and J Mac both were. Sitting here the night before the draft, can you kind of talk about each one, kind of uh, like the last week up to this point, and then you know the night before, and kind of the process that was going through your head? Uh, we know it was a huge night in your in your in your as, as young men in your lives, and I think people would be interested to kind of get your perspective on that, Jerry. Um, you know, it, it's it's it was a different situation for school and I because we didn't have to wait very long. You know, I think. You know, kind of where, as far as on draft day, where the uh, stress and where the frustration, pressure, excitement, sadness, everything kind of builds up, it's probably the longer you wait. And uh, But, you know, leading up to that point, um, you know, you, you experience all type of uh, different you know, type of emotions and type of nerves. And, uh, you know, the, the one thing that you, that you have to kind of keep telling yourself is that there's a reason why you're in this position. And the reason why you're in this position is because you played at a great university and then you maximize your potential at that university. So I think, you know, once you realize that that's what you've done to get to where you are then, I think everything else, you know, becomes more excitement than stress and pressure. I got you. That's cool. Yeah. For me, I think, um, as you know, they, they added a couple weeks to the draft. So um, it's a little bit later than what it's normally been. So the anxiety starts to set in. But. You know, once that day comes, I think um, you're just so excited that it's finally here and you're just waiting to hear your name call. For me, just being with my family was really big for me because I didn't want a lot of distractions. I just wanted to be around, you know, people that I was really comfortable with. I was talking with my coaches back at Mizzou about, you know, things they may have heard, and talking with my agent about things that he may have heard. And, you know, I was, I was anxious, but at the same time, you know, I was just thankful to be in that situation, thankful to go to a university where I could – you know, where I had the platform to do what I needed to do in order for me to reach where I am now. That's cool. Do, do you guys now as players kind of look at both your teams now where you're at and kind of project kind of in your mind the direction you think they're going to go, or is it never <laughs> consistent with what you might think? 
<laughs> I think it's never consistent with what you may think. As a player, as a player, you know what you need. You know where you you know might need some guys to fill in and help out. But on draft day, I mean, so many so many different factors go into making decisions. There's no way you can you know, kind of project what's going on. So you show me a mock draft that got everything right, and I'll show you uh, a very smart person there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think when you get in that position, I think you just want you just want to win, and I think. You know, whoever they bring in to help the organization wins is what you, is what you, uh, you know, that that's what I'm happy about. So. Yeah, you know, so often what they always say, they want to get the best football player available. They they might want a position, but when they they, they get to a certain spot, a guy might be available they didn't think would be available. Mm -hmm. and then yeah. They have, have to take So, yeah, it's uh, it's an exciting time. The, for, for the first round guys that we're kind of the, we're watching Coney Ely right here now. You know, Coney's and his name has been on a different list as you mentioned, Spoon. That are out there, and he's been anywhere from you know, the middle part of the first round to the end of the first round, and some projected uh, not in the first round. So it's kind of it's going to be a real, you know, right now he's uh, he's in New York City right now, and uh, you know you guys know kind of what he's feeling. But uh, you know, our, our uh, I'm with all my guys, you know, all the guys we want them to have the opportunities, and and uh, you know you you help set the, the the foundation for who we are and what we're about, and has allowed us to recruit a lot of good players and. Uh, Certainly very appreciative of you guys. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate you guys, you know, coming to find us, man, and giving us an opportunity. So, you know, we're grateful as well. All the way out to East Texas here, man, way out to <laughs> East Texas. <laughs> Anyone else want to jump in who hasn't had an opportunity to say anything? I got questions. Oh, Spoon wants to ask. Okay. <laughs> who else Coach, Pink Coach Pinkle. I know, I know. We um, you know, we're losing some guys off our defense that have played for us for a while, and are some some veteran guys. And I just wanted to know a few of the guys that may have stepped up in leadership roles here this this spring that you know we can look to see out there this year. Well, uh, shoot, there's quite a few guys. Here. Control Brothers, uh, who's a linebacker, uh, he, got, he last week lost him like the last four days. He had to get a, a shoulder repair, but he's a guy that uh, you know, a young linebacker, uh, a lot like you, I think, uh, athletic can run. Uh, but really has kind of stepped it up in, 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 into a big way and have an high expectation uh, level for him. Uh, we played two backup corners last year, uh, E.J. Gaines, who think will get drafted in the next couple of days. But two uh, guys that backed up are both sophomores this year. Uh, and uh, J.G., uh, John Gibson is one on one side, and Arian Penton, a true freshman uh, out of St. Louis, is on the other side. And both those guys are playing. They're young, but they're playing like veteran players and doing it. A really, uh, really, really good job, and you know we lost two great defensive ends, but you know we, you know we're fortunate depth wise, you know to have uh, Marcus Golden coming back, St. Louis defense. I think you'll you'll see him play at the next level, um, and Shane Ray, who who uh, the Mike Michael Sam knocked out that ball in the Cotton Bowl, and Shane Ray's the guy that scooped it up and yeah, yeah. 55 yards with it down the sideline. And we have two freshmen uh, behind those guys too, and uh, and Charles Harris is one. He's from he's from he's from St. Louis and. Marcus Loud. So we have two. They're about 6'5", 255, 260 uh, yeah. freshmen that I think are really, uh, you know, potential to really depth-wise to, to be really, really great players. So there's other guys there, you know. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, I think we're going to be okay. You know, Coach Steck and, and that's defensive staff does a great job. But, you know, people got to step it up. You well know. When guys leave, you know, uh, we don't, we uh, we kind of just fill the young guys in and prepare them and and I'll tell you one thing last year about our football team, too, was that our team, probably the best, really, in, 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 you guys played a couple of great teams here at Mizzou, but this, too, was a great team. And this was a team. The players prepared and played their best almost every single game. I mean, every single game. Uh, I never saw a team prepare quite like that in all the years I've coached. And, again, you're, you guys had a couple great years here, and we had great teams, but... Uh, you know, if you can get that, if you can get that with your team, you know, every single guy is just doing everything in his power to play his best game. You know, he's given that. Really, that's all you can ask, and hopefully, we can, you know, carry that on. Yes, sir. I agree. Kids from we have a few kids from Benton Elementary. They look like they are dying to get on. I think they're like holding up a sign or anything. So, do you, do you want to say hi real quick? Hi. 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 <laughs> Do you guys have any questions? Do you just want to say hi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, What's your favorite color? 
<laughs> My favorite color, My favorite color is My two favorite colors. Black and gold. What's your favorite food? My favorite food um, is uh, sushi. You guys like sushi? Anybody? You guys like raw fish? <laughs> J-Mac, no. What's your lucky number? What's your what? What's your what? Lucky number. My lucky number is uh, 18. Yeah, 18. <laughs> what about you guys? What about uh, uh, you guys? Moon, you and J-Mac, your color. Mine is 15. Mine's 5. 15. Mine's 5. My lucky number is 5 because that's the number that I was wearing when the zoo found me. Yeah. That's her lucky number. That's my lucky number. <laughs> what, about, what, what about favorite food color for you two guys? I'm a, I'm a steak, and, steak and mashed potatoes type of guy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a steak guy myself. I love bacon. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I don't know if you guys have seen the uh, discussion we have on uh, the stadium here. Have you, have you guys seen pictures of it at all? <laughs> but you'll be so proud of it because you helped build it. You know? right. Right. I've been hearing about it. Teammates, too. And it's on the east side right now. We're going to go up to about 75,000. But it goes, it's about, you know, you know how the, the existing uh, west side press box goes about from the 10 yard line to 10 yard line. This goes about. This is about 135, 140 yards. This thing goes the full spread of the east side. And it's, uh, it's outdoor uh, load seating um, with uh, restaurants inside, and oh, wow. you guys will be so proud. You see it from Stadium Boulevard. This thing sits oh, up wow. there, and it's just really, really impressive, and it's really added so much uh, to to uh, the zoo. And um, I gotta come. Take, I gotta come check it out. Yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah, most you do. definitely. Most definitely. Yeah, you guys got to see it. It's really cool. And uh, and again, I thank you and your teammates because you know the success that we've had, and, and, you know that you that you were a part of, uh, helped do all this. That's all. And I always tell those guys, you pass that down, man. You, you pass it down to somebody else, but and, and but you also uh, understand that uh, you know you are you, your decision to come to Mizzou is not a four-year decision to come to Mizzou. It's a lifetime decision, and. Uh, you know, all you guys are everything of what we have been, and you guys will ever be, be a part of our future. Yes, sir. That's awesome. Right. Glad to be a part of it, Coach. Coach. Go ahead. I got a, I got a question for you from, from the offensive yes. side of the ball now. Okay. Um, yeah. Kind of to, to piggyback on what Sean said, you know, uh, on the offensive side of the ball, you lost a lot of uh, starters who've been starting for you guys for quite some time uh, with Justin Britt. Uh, James Franklin, uh, you know, Henry wasn't a senior, but Henry Josie, uh, like Damian Washington, uh, Marcus Lucas. Um, how do you, uh, what guys do you expect to step up in those roles and, and fill those shoes? And also, um, who do you, who, who can we expect to, to, to see uh, kind of emerge as being a guy that, uh, you know, can, can, can make plays there at the University of Missouri? Well, um, Morgan Stewart, a running back from Kansas City, he played last year a little bit of his freshman. Uh, I think you'll see he's he's like uh, Hans Burrow, he's like Marcus Murphy, he's like Henry Josie. He's a difference maker. It's the fastest guy on our team, I think. I think he ran a four three one, but he's quick, he's explosive. Oh, wow. And I think you'll see really great things. I think he's an impact player, just like Henry was. And just, we've been very, very fortunate to have three or four guys like that at one time carrying the football and doing the thing. So he's a guy that I think you really you know will watch out for. Um, First of all, Matty Mock uh, is is playing at a really high level right now, and uh, uh, you know we got battle going on um, with Eddie Prince and and, and uh, 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 Burke Stresser as far as the as far as the backup position, and we're going to see where that goes, and that's going to be important. But Matty has really stepped up in, in many many ways. You know, he's a redshirt sophomore, but you know he he did a lot of great things as a young player a year ago. And I think more importantly, the players have a lot of faith, and they really believe in him. You know that leadership. You know what that's like when you you know you got a guy behind the court. I don't care what side of the ball you're on. You know you got a guy behind the center that really can make plays, and you know he's a winner, and and he's a winner in everything he does around here as far as leadership. And so I think he's really done well. Receiving core, you know, took a little bit of a hit there. Um, Darius White played a lot last year. Uh, we get him back as a starter. Um, we got Jimmy Hunt, and Jimmy Hunt, Hunt, you know, played a lot, and and we expect him. To, we do a good job, but Sasser, uh, you know, he played. So we got we we played. We had the best receiving core that we've had closest to the one when you were here, J Mac. 
we had all those guys, tight ends, and all those guys. Last year, that would parallel a little bit. We had we were like eight deep of guys could play. So we lost some players, but we have you know those three players have had a lot of experience. So we're getting really, I think, they're just kind of like starters, and and they got to make plays. You know, that's what it's all about, making plays. So I think all those guys are doing that. And then we just you know we have some freshmen coming in. Uh, we got a freshman named J Jamon Moore that redshirted a year ago, and, and he's a, a young player that's got a chance to be a good player. But we also recruited some really high-level guys, and, and they'll be coming in. So um, I think overall, you know, I think we all know the offensive line is so critically important. We've got three starters back. Evan Baines kind of leading the leading the uh, the, uh, the band right there. But uh, you know, it's um, one thing we we, we want to do is we just we want to stay healthy. That's real important. We work real hard. We made some. We didn't have any two days last year. I don't know if you knew about that. We only had we were only down about three or four anyway. Yeah, we heard about that, Coach. Yeah, I know. Man. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> and you guys, you guys thought, what has happened to that guy? He's going crazy. Uh, but you know, I, I was just tired of getting guys beat up. I mean, I was, I was just tired with it. And you know how our guys work out all summer long anyway. They work out all June and July. Uh, you used to have to work out like that because, and, and, and you went home and did that, and then you came back, and then you had to get ready for football. Our guys are ready when they get here. And yeah. so for us to sit there and we think we got to practice two, three times a day, and and I, we just learned some things. You know, we analyze what other people are doing. And uh, I know that uh, you kind of felt then disappointed that uh, I didn't do that many, many years ago. <laughs> no, I think that's the way of the of the league now, too. You know, I think Chip kind of has the same philosophy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we had four ACLs in training camp last year. But uh, other than that, we played, we, we stayed pretty healthy. And I think that goes to credit as far as, you know, how he managed training camp and how he kind of kept guys fresh and kept guys healthy. Yeah, I think we I think we wore guys out a little bit, you know, in in in, uh, in August. And, you know, it's just talking to players and everything to get feedback from them, which yeah. I did a year ago, and so that's why we made some of those changes. Anyway, health wise for both of you guys, uh, Spoon, why don't you start? Can I tell you how how are you how are you feeling? And if you had anything off season that you had to have done or anything, why don't you, you let us know that? Yeah, I did, I did, Coach. I'm a, I tore my meniscus last year um, during the season, and and then toward the end of the year, I had a bone bruise on the opposite knee, so I had surgery after the season. To um, fix my meniscus, and then what I did was I went down to to um, Pensacola to see Dr. Andrews, and what he does there, he he takes the bone marrow from your hip, he puts it in the machine, and spins it, and he injected it into both of my knees, and I'm about eight weeks out of that, and I'm feeling pretty good, man. I'm here working out, not running and stuff yet, but just doing a lot of strengthening and, and things like that, just working in the weight room with the guys and in the meetings. You know, we're having a pretty good time right now. We got some new guys here. We signed a pretty pretty good. We free on a pretty good group in our free agency, so um, it's going well. Good. I'm, I'm glad you're doing well. Spoon, what about you? How you doing? I mean, uh, J-Mac, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. You know, I'm about uh, nine and a half months removed from surgery, ACL surgery. Um, and, you know, we got a chance to get on the field uh, Monday kind of with the whole team and everything, and I've taken all the reps. Um, I've, I've, done, I've done all the drills. And uh, in some aspects um, – you know, based off of the the data that they had last year with uh, how I performed, uh, I'm actually faster. Uh, my acceleration is faster and everything, too. So uh, I'm really excited about uh, you know, this upcoming season. Uh, it's a big year for me. It's a big year for, for the Eagles. Um, you know, the most important thing right now is just kind of uh, making sure I stay healthy, making sure I keep taking care of my body. Um, but, you know, I couldn't actually be in a better place right now. Yeah, we talk about that all the time about taking care of your body. We do it all the time, and and we 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 have a nutritionist on board here now, and uh, Jana Heitmeyer, and you guys know Jana, and she's she. We and what we do is we educate our players. We don't sit there and eat this, don't eat this, that kind of thing. We yeah. just educate them why uh, they should eat the right things and what it does for them in a positive way. And you know, everybody's trying to get the edge now, and so taking care of your body, what you eat, how you lift, how, you know, all the things, and and and. Uh, so we, I think we've learned a lot of things here, and we're trying to apply those things too. Uh, it's the same things you guys are trying to do. If you, you stay healthy, you got a whole lot better chance of being uh, being a good football team. Yes, you do. So I'm following along on Twitter you, again. If you're watching, use hashtag Hangout with GP. But before I read some of those, anybody who hasn't had an opportunity to jump in, go ahead. Ask anything to anybody, or bring up anything. I'll ask a question. SEC last week announced that starting in 2016, we'd have to play a team non-conference in the Big 12, ACC, Big 10, or Pac-12. So any chance we'll get Kansas back? Kendra, by the way, can you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Kendra. I graduated from Mizzou 2010, and I work at ESPN. 
Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, we. Uh, there's no obviously a question that uh, you know that uh, I think that did, did we just lose. We some, lost Spoon. Maybe he'll jump back in. in. Yeah. Go ahead, but he'll probably be able to jump back in here. We'll see. Okay, we got him there. Um, <laughs> the, that was question again. But, uh, Go ahead and re-ask it, Kendra. Any, any chance we get Kansas back oh, in 2016? Geez. You know, we want we want to play Kansas again. You know, it's a great rivalry that we've had all those years, and uh, you know, um, it, it's been an open invitation. And you know, there's some still some pouting going on still, and so uh, it it just uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, it'll happen again someday. It will, and uh, it'll be great for our fans. You know, I I it would it, I think I'm on the on the you know in every sport it would be good. So you know, we'll see what happens. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Anyone else? There's always a lot of uh, pouting going on in, in Kansas. Uh, uh, Aaron Cruz, Mizzou alumni, uh, 2003, big Mizzou fan. Uh, I just wanted to. Uh, this was for Spoon too, so I'm, I'm sad he he got he left for a little bit. But um, I, I heard both you guys, Macklin and, and Spoon, talking about how grateful they were to to be at Mizzou, and I think that's that's awesome. And just wanted to express that we're really grateful to have you, and how awesome it is on Sunday to. Hear Mizzou mentioned when we're watching watching the NFL games and it uh, from Mizzou Nation, it just makes us all proud when we hear our university mentioned on on Fox and CBS and, and even in like pregame and stuff. It's it's great. So uh, I was wondering how in, in in Philadelphia, Jay Mack and I was going to ask Boone in Atlanta how you guys can uh, help Mizzou's recruiting and if you do anything like that while you're it, I know you're busy guys, but if you get out and and talk about Mizzou anywhere and where you're at now in the NFL. Uh, well, for starters, I just want to, you know, start by saying, um, you know, credit goes to the University of Missouri and Coach Pinkle. Um, you know, from the time I got there to now, I think I've seen, you know, the players from the University of Missouri and NFL quadruple. You know what I mean? So I think that's credit to the direction the program went in and and the, and kind of kind of what they value and what they teach there at the University of Missouri. Yeah. Um, and you know. <clears throat> I think the best way that you can, you know, be a good representative of, of your university and, and a good recruiter is just lead by a positive example. I think, you know, you do the right things on and off the field, uh, carry yourself in a good manner. Um, and I think, you know, people respect that. Uh, I think it goes back to, you know, this is before I had any conversation. You know, unfortunately, uh, he's not a part of the program anymore. But, you know, before I had any conversation with DGB, you know, Cat showed him, you know, a video of kind of, you know, me – uh, making plays in college, making plays in NFL, and kind of some off the field stuff, and he was just like, "Wow, you know, I think that's kind of, you know, what speaks to kids more. You know, I think, you know, once they see you uh, do the little things um, off the field and handle yourself on the field as well, mm. I think that's that's the best way to recruit for your school." Yeah, that's awesome. Nice. I, you know, I would uh, second that, I, and I, I I agree with that. And and you know, we we are our, our NFL players uh, that. that that uh, from here in Mizzou, they do such a great job of, of uh, mentioning uh, the University of Missouri. Is, is, is often uh, they come back probably more than most uh, players come back, and we're very appreciative of that. They get involved in the community here, uh, and not only not, not only they, they do they do things in their their community where they live, but they also come back to to, to Columbia or, or uh, uh -huh. Springfield or different towns uh, within the state of Missouri to give their time back and. Uh, and though that's all that all speaks uh, an awful lot and you know it's amazing too is that, you know it's uh, I was uh, Don James uh, uh, who I played for and coached for uh, um, a long time ago uh, and, and uh, he was my idol and built our program on him he passed away in in, in, uh, in October but he uh, when I became the head coach or when I was I first got here at, at Missouri we were we were just struggling so I was so disappointed you know we were losing season losing season winning season I mean we were really struggling and I was golfing with him in Seattle and he uh, I said coach I'm doing everything right and I knew I was doing everything right we're doing everything right and he didn't and I said I just don't know what's going on he didn't say anything to say anything about three holes later he looks over at me and he says uh, Gary I was thinking about what you're saying about how you're doing everything right he said I I got this for you and I said what's that coach and he says when you start getting more players drafted, you're going to start winning more football games. So what he was saying is you got to have good players. There's not magic out there. Now, there's some people that don't win with good players, you know, and that happens in the NFL and happens you know, in uh, the spoon is back. He's back. <laughs> Hi. Hi, guys. But, you know, that you got to have good players. You do. You know, you have to have people make plays, and, and, and that's recruiting, and that's also a thing that we've, we've done, uh, uh, Spoon and J-Mac. 
we have this thing we call hashtag Mizzou, Mizzou Made now. We talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. That uh, you know we're the seventh winningest program and or eighth winningest program in the last seven years in college football, BCS college football, and our recruiting classes have probably ranked about thirtieth. So something's off here, okay? Something. Uh, I, I obviously we believe in who we recruit and how we recruit, but our our big thing is is, is uh, Mizzou Made. You know we think. With Coach Ivy, you know, you know Pat, Pat Ivy, our strength conditioning coach, and all the people that we have in academics and all all our services that Mizzou made means that we think we do a better job of preparing our players, strength, speed, quickness, all those things, academics, a total persons program. We prepare them better than anybody in the country, and uh, we think that's a, a big part of the success we've had. Find athletes, guys can be got great uh, potential. And then and, and develop them and, and help them be the best they can. And so you hear Mizzou made, and you see it on any shirts around here in Columbia, or you see people talk about it. Uh, that's what it means. Awesome. Henry, you got a question? <laughs> yeah. Um, first to Jeremy Macklin, uh, are you going to sign with Kansas City next year and reunite <laughs> with Coach Reed? <laughs> I was begging, I was praying that you would come play for Kansas City this year with Chase, but I understand staying in Philly. Um, <laughs> I love him. He's, a, he's a wonderful dude. I, he's a great coach, even better person. Um, you know, and, and yeah, you know that's you know to be honest with you, if if I didn't sign back to 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 Philly, which obviously that's where I wanted to be, yeah. Um, Kansas City was was a place that I would would have highly considered going. So, um, coming back home, being close to home would have been would have been pretty sweet. But uh, Philly's my new home now, so. Yeah. No, I totally understand. And then I have a question for Spoon because I'm also I'm still a Chiefs fan. What was it like playing with Tony Gonzalez for those years? Man, it was pretty awesome. You know, when I when I first got here, he was one of the guys that I really looked at to, you know, kind of see how you become a professional. And there's the perfect perfect example. And just playing with him, man, you just always knew he would he would be the best tight end on the field, and he would always give you an opportunity to win. So he was fun to play with, man. Tony, he's a really nice guy, man. He'll talk with you and just. You know, kind of fill you in on some things you should you should know about if you're going to be a part of this league. It was great playing with them, man. Cool, awesome, thank you. Good question. Yeah, good. Anyone else want to jump in? I'll check out Twitter, see if anybody's asked anything on hashtag Hangout with GP real quick. Hey, what what is it now after the draft is over? What is it now after the draft is over? As far as working out with the teams right. and everything. Well, next week. Uh, Next week, with the we'll new have a new guy. Set up a lot yeah. different. Oh. Not bad, Jeremy. <laughs> Go ahead, no. bro. Okay. Uh, with, with the new CBA, it's set up a lot differently. Um, the new CBA is very player friendly, so it's, it's to like protect us and try to you know keep the guys healthy and, and, and make it into the season. So um, we start a little later than normal. Um, so we got these things we call phases. So phase one is when you start back up and it's just workouts, workout on the field, uh, speed work and stuff like that. No coaches can be involved whatsoever. Um, you get to phase two, then you can actually start getting on the field and kind of going through some off-season workouts, going through plays, uh, but there cannot be any defense on the other side. And for defense, there can't be any offensive players on the other side. I, I think they call it There's you can't have a heartbeat in front of you or something like that. Mm -hmm. So then finally, you know, here comes the draft. You have the draft. You go through another week of phase two, and then there's a mandatory rookie mini camp for us. So now the rookies that we draft and some of the uh, rookie free agents that we bring in, they then have basically practice without pads for three, three or four days. Um we do another week of phase two, and then we get into our mandatory mini camp, uh, which is the whole team. Um, it's basically training camp uh, without pads, where there can be a defense on the other side of the ball. Um, then after that, we get about a month and some change off, and then we're right into training camp. Hmm. So when you, get, when you get that month off and you go through all these things, you got a month off it. What does that put you like in the middle of June when you start getting that month off? Is that what it is? Or yeah, yeah. It, it used to be early June, but now it's like June seventeenth this year. I think is our last day. Yeah, they're changing that. Well, that, 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 that. I think there's a lot of pluses with that. And 
on keeping you guys uh, healthy. You know, I, I think there's a, makes a, there's a lot of common sense there. Do that, Spoon. What 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 do you now? Do you when you leave for that month? When you when you come back, do you have to report at a particular weight? Do you have to run 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 for a mile or or anything? They test your cardio or what? What do you have to do? do they do anything like that? Well, our our off season program is pretty is pretty tough. So we haven't had a conditioning test when we've come back, but there always is like a weight that you you want to come back at. They want to make sure you're at a certain you know certain spot. So um, for me, it's about 238. My ceiling is about 242, so I don't want to come back any heavier than that. And then, of course, you'll lose a little bit of weight during training camp, and you know, as the season goes along, you you'll probably just maintain right where you right where you are. But um, you know, we don't have a conditioning test unless I think if you don't show that you're in in pretty good shape as a unit, then that's when they start you know to have the conditioning test to make sure. But a lot of teams do it different. Every team is a little bit different that way too. Hey, how, how, is Willie Mo doing okay? Uh, he's doing great, um, Will. He's, he's, really, he's like the old man on our defense now, man. He's, he's I know. He's taking uh, care of his he, business. I know, man. I, know, I, know, I know he's doing well. Tell, tell him, I tell him, uh, uh, tell him hi for me, okay? I tell him how proud I am. Yes, sir, I will do, coach. We're gonna have to get him in one of these Google Hangouts. That's what we're gonna have to do. That's exactly right. <laughs> and tell him, tell him no rapping either. Yeah, just, I was just, gonna just, say. <laughs> And you know what's pretty cool about that? What's pretty cool about it? You know, I, you know, Brad Smith is with me. And was, uh, I'm just gonna say the same thing about Brad. And uh, I, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, the other day, you know, as of right now, you know, we're all running with the first group. Me, me, Riley Cooper, and Brad's the inside slot guy. And uh, we got a chance. We just started talking about Mizzou and talking about kind of, you know, how we need to all get back there and do some stuff. And he was like, I, I, he was like, it's crazy. And I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, that me and you are actually playing oh. together. And I think that's, you know, it, it really is kind of crazy how, you know, you could miss a whole generation of players, but then connect with them at the next level. You know, I've never played yeah. with Damian, you know, but if we decide to draft him, then we get to play together. I think that's pretty cool. And I think that's, you know, something to be proud of. Yes, it is. That would yeah, be fun. That, 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 that is really special. And, uh, and Brad Smith, tell us out of Brad, too. You know, Brad is, a, as you well know, as you well know, uh, uh, Jay Mack, and you're, you're, you're around him a little bit now. There's not a whole lot better people in the world walking around than that guy. He, he's probably the single most – he's probably the, the best person I've ever met in my entire life. I, I'm, I, next to you guys, I'm, 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 I I'm put him third, fourth, this something like that. He's not in here, right? No, Brad's not here. Don't, don't tell Brad I said that, though. Yeah. That's just between me and you. And you. <laughs> and everybody here. Because I like the helmet in the back, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a little upset that the uniforms changed once we left. You know, you guys look great, man. Everybody talks about what Missouri's wearing. And on top of that, we're winning games. So it's pretty awesome. I just want to commend you guys on that. Tell Don Bourne we said hello. <laughs> I will. And you know, you know, the amazing thing is, uh, we wanted to have the uniforms. And Nike worked with us, and we didn't want to have him real gaudy looking. We didn't want him to look kind of freaky looking. We wanted to have him classy. And I, what I do is I sit with all the seniors here about the second week of of, um, of August, and we talk about and we bring in mannequins, these full dressed mannequins. And they choose what they're going to – you know, I don't want any debates on Monday before we're going to play a game, what uniform we're going to wear. So we get that all taken care of in, uh, in August. Uh, nice. But I'll tell you, that's been great for us recruiting, and they're classy. And, uh, you know, I think you look back at the Cotton Bowl and look how, you know, how our kids were dressed in the Cotton Bowl and, and uh, just really, really looked first class. So I, I appreciate that. Always trying, always trying to make Mizzou better. You know, we're constantly yeah. trying to do little things to make it a better place. No doubt. Coach, are preparations different with a playoff versus a national championship game? No, I, I think you know. I, I think it's. I don't think, bottom line is, in, if, in, for us, if you if you want to get in get into that thing, you got to we got to win the SEC East. Okay, you win the SEC East, and then you got you got an opportunity then to get in that game and uh, and, and play in the championship game. So everyone wants to win the national championship, but you know, without question, there's a process to get there. And it's the SEC East. And it's the SEC championship game, and then um, you know certainly to, to get into the big game. Now, in 2007, when these guys were playing, uh, we we were a half away from playing in the national championship game. And then when you know when you know seven years later, you know, this year it was the same thing. We we're a quarter away. You know, two point down, two points in the fourth quarter against Auburn, 
and didn't do the things necessary to, to, to win the football game. But uh, we've been in the hunt in two of the last seven years. Uh, most teams can't say that. But uh, our goal is to still win the national championship and will always be. Uh, what we try to do is try to keep the standard high, you know, not, not just go to bowl games, but uh, win, win at the standard that these two guys were a part of. And that's what we're, we're trying to really instill into our players. And um, it's, it's out there, but I think it's going to be real exciting for college football. I believe, you know, there, there's, you know, the college football is the best in-season of sport of any because every single week the national championship's on the line. Every single week, and there's no other sport like that. And so I also think that we are always so much closer to having the top five teams in the right, at least in that in the hunt there, at the very end, than, than just saying, okay, you can, you can lose four games and go play, get in the playoffs and win a championship. You can't do that in college football. And so what we're going to do is uh, one will play four, two will play three, and then that one more game, uh, and this year it's going to be uh, in, in, in Texas, uh, in the Texas State AT&T Stadium in Dallas where the Cotton Bowl is, and you guys have both been in there. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's going to be great, really great for college football. But, but we're maintaining the integrity of the season, and we're also, uh, we're also uh, maintaining the integrity of all the bowl games that so many players get an opportunity to play in college football. Hey, I'm not, I'm not brought up to date on that. Do you have to be a conference champion to be in that 14 playoff? No, no, you don't. You don't. Do you agree with that? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. I don't, I don't, have, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, because there, there are some, most leagues, you can lose four games and still get in the playoffs. Absolutely. You, know what I'm you don't have to, you don't have to win your championship, uh, uh, your your divisional championship, wherever you guys, which one, ever you're in. You don't have to necessarily win at the end. I don't believe do you. you just have to have the best record. All right. Yep. You, a, a guy with a team of the best record doesn't has a chance to win the Super Bowl, right? You win your division, you're automatically in. But then they have those wild cards. Then, then they have all those wild cards, and those guys got a chance to win it too. I think. Right. Yeah. I think um, um, New York Giants did that a couple years ago, didn't they? they, did. they, they yeah. yeah. And so, um, anyway, I, I uh, bottom line is they're going to have a committee, though. It's just not going to be based on polls. They're going to have a committee of seven or eight or nine people. And they're going to make the final determining factor in the top four. And I think very, very possible. You, it's very possible to see two SEC uh, teams in 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 the in the final four. That that, that can happen. And uh, I'll tell you, it's a great league, guys. I'm telling you, you know, the Big Twelve is a great league. I really respect it. But this league is something you you better strap. And it's like it's like where you guys play every yeah. single week. There 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 are no breaks. You know, right. the average teams aren't average. They're way way above. They're they're really good. And we're playing in some of the best stadiums in the country, which is fun to play. And uh, boy, it's uh, it's it's a great league to play in as as, as the league uh, as a great league that you guys play in too. It looks good. It looks looks fun to play in. It looks awesome. Okay, well we're gonna have meetings coming up soon. So we can have a meeting time for one more question, and then if anybody wants to ask one more question, do we have some? Yes. But if anybody wants to jump okay, in. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we have a question. What did, what did you look up to when you were in uh, college? Who do you look up to? I mean, I still look up to these guys. You know, you know, for me being who I am uh, as a football player, you know, I look up to the GOAT, you know, Jerry Rice, you know, Torrey Holt, guys like that. You know, and then I look up to my older brother as well because I feel like without my older brother, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And I think, uh, you know, growing up in a situation that I did, not having my father in the picture, um, he's kind of what kept me level-headed. He's kind of uh, kept me motivated. You know, he led the, the right path for me. You know, he went to college. He played football in college. He did all those things that I wanted to do. Um, and I think if it wasn't for him, uh, growing up where I grew up, I probably could have got caught up in a lot of things that, you know, I really didn't want any part of. So uh, I think, you know, from a from a uh, personal standpoint, and I think, you know, if I wanted to call somebody my hero, I'd call my older brother my hero. Awesome. And for me, you know, growing up, um, I grew up in Jasper, Texas. It's a really small town, and my older brothers, they both played high school and college football as well. So they kind of gave me the path as well. But when I watched the guys in the pros when I was a kid, one guy who I really watched was Derek Brooks, who played linebacker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And they actually won a championship. He was a part of their championship, their one championship. And, um, you know, I've had a chance to meet him since I've been in the NFL. And 
you know, had a chance to study his game. And, you know, um, I think he's, he's the guy that a lot of players who play my position can look up to. And when I was in college, the one guy who I really looked up to was Lance Briggs, who plays linebackers for the linebacker for the Chicago Bears. And just because, you know, when I went to Mizzou, we were kind of doing our defense off of Chicago's defense. And Lance was the piece that I played at Mizzou. So he was one of the guys that I looked at. And I still admire him to this day. Yeah. Well, uh, I just really appreciate everybody being a part of this. Certainly uh, Spoon, you, and Jay Mapp. I know you're doing a lot of different things. All our, our, our guests, uh, those of you kids from elementary school, we appreciate you and everybody else uh, that are, who are part of this. Um, you know, we're very proud of you. We're very proud of, uh, of what you did here at Mizzou. Uh, I know you guys uh, love this place as, as much as we, we love you. And uh, good luck to you guys. Uh, you're both great representatives of, of, of us. And uh, I, uh, I, anything I can ever do for you, give me a call. So. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks, guys. Make sure you're following along on GaryPinkle.com and following Coach on Twitter all weekend because we have a big NFL draft coming. NFL, good luck to our NFL, yes, guys. good luck, everybody. And M-I-Z. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you.